behind me is one of the uh, interconnecting escape routes. It looks kind of dark. Uh, I'm not sure whether to go in. I don't know what lurks <laughs> below there. But only one way to find out. Let's go in and see. So I was heading out to uh, visit Lepakshi temple and cruising along and all of a sudden So just look at those uh, outcrops of rock I just love these rocky outcrops I keep wondering whether these are accessible whether it's possible to go trekking in these places and every time I pass them I kind of feel longing to try and explore them but uh, I don't really have the guts um, to go exploring by myself. So, uh, change of plans. There's a place called Budibande Fort. I'm going to take a diversion and head to Budibande Fort. Anyway, it says there's a 15 minute drive along this road. So uh, behind me, what you see is the Gudibandi Lake. So I got a little bit lost. Uh, this is a small road that turns off to the right. It took me a while to actually detect that there was a road here. So what you see behind me is uh, Gudibande Fort. And uh, it's supposed to be a seven level uh, walk up upwards. I'm not really sure what this seven level means. But we'll, we'll find out as we go along. I think there must be seven stops along the way. And right on top is the fort. Uh, I've parked my car down below over there. So from what I understood about this fort, uh, which you can see at the back there, uh, is that it was built by a local Shaftin uh, called Bhair Gauda and some even say there was a yogi involved uh, in, in its construction and as I said there's about seven levels to go um, and there's supposed to be some interconnecting uh, tunnels, channels in between these seven levels and that was supposed to help uh, the uh, soldiers kind of evade the enemies if, if under attack and also uh, Bhairagauda is supposed to be known as the Robin Hood of this place because apparently he, he used to rob the rich and give to the poor and he was quite popular and I can see why he would kind of want to construct a fort on top of this because it gives you a grand view of the whole city and everything around. Now, I think I must have climbed around 100 steps or so. It's already quite tiring because the sun is also high. But there's supposed to be 500 steps upwards because the steps have now is given way to a trail. So Bhairagauda apparently belonged to the Vijayanagara Empire. He must have been a local chieftain of the region. Uh, I'm not sure if the fort was involved in any warfare or such. Um, but if you note from the previous video uh, which I had taken in Belur, that was built by the Hoysalas which came before the Vijayanagara if I'm not wrong. Um, and 
Vijayanagara Kingdom was involved in restoring some of the uh, temples uh, in Belur. Um, there is a temple right on top and we will see it there. So this seems to be the first entrance point. There is a grill here but it's unlocked. And seems to be some sort of a gateway. You can see these old granite pillars and a granite ceiling ceiling. Somebody's been cooking here. It's completely abandoned. And there seems, seems to be some structure over there. I can't really see into that. But let's see if we can find a way inside. Looks like this. Maybe the entrance. Okay. So, down there is a gate. And I entered from there. This looks completely deserted. Seems to be seems to have been a mud wall over here which is broken. But the rest of it is granite. Carved pillars. I mean carved into shapes and not really anything else. And what is this? Not sure what this is. It looks like a small room. With, with a pit in, in the middle. Not sure what this is. These structures are absolutely fascinating. Uh, but I have no idea what this is. And there's so much potential to develop these locations as tourist, historical tourist destinations to make people aware of what happened in the past and for example, what is this structure? What is the purpose it served? You can see here, it's got a dome as well with some carvings. Beautiful. And this is the path that continues to the fort. Looks like we're coming up to the second gate. If you could call it a gate. And I can see here that just above the doorway there are some intricate decorations and kind of arches built into the fort. And this looks like I don't know, it looks like cement, but obviously it must be lime or something like that. And there's both granite as well as uh, bricks involved in the construction. And from here, it looks to be kind of a continuous wall going upwards. I can see some monkeys here. Hopefully, they are not very good. Any trouble? Oh, look here. So, behind me is one of the uh, interconnecting escape routes. It looks kind of dark. I'm not sure whether to go in. I don't know what lurks <laughs> below there, but only one way to find out. Let's go in and see.
Okay. So it looks like kind of it's a dead end, but at at some point, what you see behind me, there must have been a path going somewhere down. Kind of a tight squeeze in here. Yeah, that was kind of scary because it has some, it has the smell of some animal, and God knows what could be lurking there. I must be about halfway there, and it's, it's tiring oh, on a hot day. Uh, should have come slightly earlier before the sun was completely out. But it's really interesting to see these old structures, and God knows what would have happened here in the past. How many people lived in this fort? Uh, what kind of activities happened? You can see these rock formations and they just form a natural, you know, arch-like structure. But on this side, they've actually built up a wall using granite rocks. And these are kind of massive boulders. Quite sure one person wouldn't be able to lift it. So, and here too, the steps are made out of granite, like most of the other forts. So there must have been some you know, really heavy work involved in constructing this fort. I guess that must have been uh, a guard outpost or something. This is some sort of a stone carving of a guard. You can see people have been worshipping. There seems to be a path going to the left. You can see there's some sort of construction there. And that's the port up there. There are lots of people. I'm going to try and take this path and see where this leads to. So there's two ways here, one going to the left and one going to the right. So the right path kind of hits one of the watch points. You can see the view from here. You can see the spectacular view from here. Uh, behind me is the fort. Now I have to be careful because there's a steep drop below. But behind me is the fort. A superb view, oh, fantastic view, and I would imagine in the past there would be uh, soldiers or people here watching out for any kind of unusual activity uh, coming from down there. You can see there uh, that seems to be the lake that we passed on our way here, and you can see the road there too, and the way that. Uh, led uh, to the left, uh, seems to head to that watchtower. So I'm taking that way to the left and trying to go up there. There's a small uh, tunnel that leads downwards. I'm going to check this out. Oh. So, again, this is another viewpoint. It's nice and breezy here. It's kind of making my sweat dry up and cooling me off. Uh, you can also see the below that 
watch tower that we went to earlier uh, there's a small hole i'm guessing that's another again these tunnels have not been built to man size you have to essentially crawl through them i guess it makes it difficult for people to enter through and from here you also get a beautiful view of the fort itself the final set of steps leading upwards to the fort this is some kind of a platform again some sort of path leading outwards or downwards and you can see there seem to be carved in the shape of arches it sort of continues over there typical of a fort here the doggy oh what's this so behind me is a small rock you can see there i don't know if you can see there's some frogs there It looks pretty deep, so this would have been one of the water sources for the people uh, staying here in the fort. But this particular fort is also known for its uh, water distribution system, uh, or water rainwater harvesting system. I assume these would have been uh, kind of uh, collected during the rains. And if you look here on those sides, you can see uh, some of the rock has been cut. You can see this. definite uh, man made uh, carving there uh, and so looks like it has intentionally been uh, carved out but you can also see those those walls which seems to be built to kind of keep the water in and collect water during the rains the 360 degree view from here kind of a small shed here so it looks like uh, it's been plastered recently and on that side is again another larger shed this is much larger here kind of like a hall not sure what this is used for on top of the fort there is this temple which is called sri rameshwara temple and this temple is supposed to have been established by sage vishwamitra and lord rama and this is supposedly one of the 108 jyotirlingas uh, which are supposed to represent the power of of uh, shiva so behind me you can see uh, a pillar and this pillar is entirely carved out of stone Uh, 
not on one side. This looks like a, uh, perhaps drama. So that's it. I'm going to try and uh, head back now because I also want to try and check out uh, Lepakshi Temple, which is another 50 kilometers or so from here. So to kind of summarize, uh, it's a nice little place uh, to visit. Uh, and what I initially said were the seven uh, levels turned out to be the seven uh, kind of. Uh, gateways along the way, along the route, uh, and you did see uh, those pools which store or uh, harvest rainwater, um, and the temple on top. Uh, so it's about one to one and a half hours away from Bangalore, depending on where you stay, uh, and it's a nice little drive. And if you start in the morning, uh, it took me. About one hour to go on top and check it out and come back and one hour, uh, one and a half hours for the trip itself. So it's easily doable, kind of like a weekend, one day stop from Bangalore. So that's it now. I'm signing off. Hope to see you in the next video. Ta-da!